All right, everyone, everything's ready for Patrick to review Inside Out. Aw, oh, yeah, the Pixar film that got the plus before Disney Plus. I'm still crying over the ending. It's about time I had a line for this after I wasn't picked as one of the representatives for the top 10 multiverse cartoon. Red is my favorite. Can we switch colors? No, no, you like your little green eyed monster. Uh, is it really necessary to bring those other emotions? What are you talking about? Well, first, they weren't even in the first movie. And second, I'm still confused over the trailers. Are they really evil or are they going to turn good at the end? Uh, no offense. Whatever. Oh, come on. It's a watch party. It will be fine. If I can make a prediction, if Bearsman seems friendly out of the new additions to number two. I do appreciate the invitation, but are you sure you want him to review it? It's just too perfect. What if the sequel can't reach the same perfection? I just want this upcoming movie to have its first good impression and be lots of fun for all families. Oh my goodness, stop overreacting. You're acting like a Twitter. Look, everyone, I know we watched this movie several times ever since it came out and love every minute of it. And we all knew part two was going to happen sooner or later. This was an idea that had tons of ideas during its making and they wanted to add more to them for Joy and the Other Emotions Adventures. Remember those latest scenes from Toy Story from the DVD bonus features? Yeah, those bugs still give me the creeps. Well, now we know some of those things actually got moved into the sequel, and we know Inside Out is going to do the same thing for some mind-blowing world building. It also serves as a self-preparation to remember all the important elements of why we laugh, cheer, and cry about everything from it. Exactly! Well, okay, if you insist. 20 million bucks to anxiety turns over a new leaf. Make it 30. Deal. Buckle up, everyone. We got one full movie to review. I'm ready. Released in June 19, 2015, everyone was blown away with just about everything. The film was directed by Up Director, who later became the latest CCO of Pixar, Pete Doctor, and co-director Ryan Del Carmen. The idea started back in 2009 when Pete noticed that his daughter has gone through some changes in her personality as she grew older. And during development, they consulted with psychologists and neuroscientists to portray the human mind accurately. In the end, it resulted in the film becoming not just one of the best Pixar films, but one of the greatest anime films of all time. And seeing how they were already planning to make a sequel of it, I think it's time to look over at what sort of joy the first film gave us before we start overthinking about what's to come in the upcoming second movie. Welcome to another episode of The One Reviews. Here comes a thought I had in mind to talk about. This is Inside Out. It's the story of a girl named Riley, and inside her head are five emotions. Joy, sadness, anger, disgust, and fear. And their job is to control Riley's feelings and ensure that she has the best day ever. But one day, her family decided to move to San Francisco, and sadness accidentally messed with Riley's core memories. The dilemma results in joy and sadness getting ejected and stranded in parts of Riley's mind. While anger, disgust, and fear try to keep Riley under control, joy and sadness must head back to headquarters before Riley's mind falls apart. I'll say this immediately, I love the theme of human minds in this movie! Everything in this movie seemed to point out nearly all the things from the brain what makes a person think. Emotions, memories, personalities, imagination, dreams, the subconscious, and lots more. Whenever it comes to the emotions at headquarters, it shows how do they respond, what creates a memory, and whenever they create a memory that's very important, it becomes a personality. As for the other components of the mind, the crew and Joy and Sandy try to find their way back. However, whatever happens inside the mind, there are some funny jokes that happen during the film, from visual puns to over-the-top expressions and dialogue from the voice performers. Lead on, mind map! Show me where we're going! Okay, only... Uh, I'm too sad to walk. When it comes to the plot between Joy and Sadness journey and Riley adjusting her new life in San Francisco, they connect and reflect perfectly to the entire storyline. It also acts as a commentary that every emotion has a role to play, no matter how small. This is especially about the connection between Joy and Sadness. Joy wants to make Riley happy even through the toughest times, while Sadness wants to be a value emotion of the team. And yes, there are a lot of scenes in the movie that will make you cry like Sadness. The reason why everyone is so attached to the story is because, even though most of it takes place in Riley's mind, it still captures the realism of the emotions the characters are feeling, and we understand who they are and what they're going through. 
The audience can relate to the characters whenever they feel happy, sad, or scared about changes like growing up or moving to another city, state, or country. And here's a fun little game. If you trim out all the mind scenes and focus on the real world scenes, you'll get a shorter version of the film, but the feels are still there. However, all the characters from the entire film help build a heartwarming connection. One thing's for sure, whenever you think of the human mind, such as your own emotions, you will be thinking about these characters taking control of your body and brain. Originally, the film was going to have up to 27 emotions, but they reduced it down to 5 to keep it simplistic, while a few of them are going to appear later in the sequel. With the main emotions we got from the first film, they really bring a lot of enjoyment and life to the film. And it's all thanks to these excellent voice actors like Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Louis Black, Mindy Keeling, and Bill Hader. Let's start with the leader and first emotion from Riley's mind, Joy. She is the cheerful, energetic member of the group that always wants to make sure Riley has the perfect happy day. She tries to keep things optimistic and everything in headquarters under control. Then there is Sadness, the exact opposite of Joy who is more pessimistic and thinks gloomy things. Which brings another mention that this film managed to succeed by answering the question, what makes Sadness an important emotion? Of course, when you think of that emotion, the first thing we can think of is... <coughs> Well, that. But once Joy and Sadness got separated from headquarters, Joy learned that Sadness helped bring happiness and compromise to settle any problem, showing that there's more to a sad emotion than crying. The other emotions from the team all have their funny moments, but still play important roles in the movie to help Riley through the toughest times. There is Fear, the paranoid one that wants to keep Riley safe from danger, Disgust is the honest emotion who is more into protecting Riley's image, and Anger is the short-tempered member who released the most emotion during Joy and Sadness' absence that gets angry easily. But when it comes to their host, Riley, she actually has the most development out of all the characters in the movie. Since the film takes place in her mind and it is a coming-of-age story, we know and understand who she is from her memories, personalities, subconsciousness, and more. Even after the family move away and Joy and Sadness are there to guide her, there is still some depth that went into her experience. She tries so hard to stay the happy girl her parents want her to be and adjust to her new home, but it has grown very challenging to adapt to this new change in her life all by herself. Another character that appears in Riley's mind is Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend who is the comic relief that helps Joy and Sadness return them back to headquarters by exploring other areas of the mind. Where's that noise coming from? Whoa, easy there! Don't give away too much of the movie! I can't help it. He was so noble and memorable. <laughs> okay then, moving on. This is one of those movies that managed to use cartoony animation and realistic animation simultaneously. This is due to the fact where some human minds like from Riley's are more colorful and vibrant, and the inhabitants look like they come from a cartoon show with some squash and stretch movements that's something out of a Looney Tunes or classic Mickey and Friends cartoon. While the real world in Inside Out almost looks like our real world and the people are down to earth and less exaggerated. Going back to the designs of the mind characters, all the emotions have a more silly or abstract look in order to match, well, their emotions. The other characters like the mind workers have circular bodies to make them look like brain cells. And others like Bing Bong and the other inhabitants of Imagination Land and Dream Productions are more fictional. The other areas that Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong enter not only bring a lot of world building, but more creativity than the last. These include long term memory being a giant looking maze, Imagination Land is a childlike wonderland, Dream Production is a studio log where dreams become movies, the subconscious is a dark area filled with reoccurring nightmarish fears, and the memory dump is a gloomy pit where all forgotten memories become dim and faded. Another element in the animation that keeps the settings and imagination active are the visual special effects. Rather it be the glowing memories, the particle textures on some emotion characters, or whenever a personality island gets created or destroyed, it still captures the fantasy like spectacle to it. And as a bonus, there's a scene in the abstract thought where Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong transform into old 3D models or 2D animated to make it more surreal. There is one portion of the production that is worth talking about, the music. Everything about the piano melody is just beautiful, whimsical, and very touching. We definitely need this on a comp playlist or meditation. And with so much craftsmanship and complex storytelling, that's how it ended up being one of the best anime films of all time. Inside Out is just perfect. It's literally an emotional film filled with happiness and tears from an engaging story, lovable characters, and out-of-this-world animation. This is an absolute must-watch for everyone, 
or a must rewatch for everyone. It's still unbelievable even years later, and everyone is still rewatching this unforgettable movie. It's really ironic for a movie that's all about the human mind. It shows the mind holds the key to imagination and brings ideas like Inside Out into a reality. You all know what grade I'm going to give it. I'm sure we're all thinking about it the minute I decide to review this movie. The first movie definitely earned itself an A+, and it gets a Diploma of Destiny. I'm Matt Harry Patrick. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to eat at French Fry Forest. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos, or feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more upcoming reviews and other projects. I'll see you soon.